Okay, welcome to another drawing demo video. This one is on construction drawing. So uh, this is uh, something where we are going to use um, just line, uh, no light and shadow, um, no range of value, just um, contour lines. Uh, so I'm gonna show you from start to finish how to do this. And I have a setup in front of me um, on a little table. I'm set up here with my drawing board at an angle so I can have a direct view of the surface of the drawing paper. I have a HB drawing pencil. HB or 2B works great for starting out your drawing. Um, and uh, in my still life setup, I have all basic shape um simple shape items so um anything that's like a sphere um a cone a cylinder a cube those types of shaped items are great so what i have found uh in my home is a little um cube shaped waste paper basket a sphere shaped tennis ball uh, cylinder shaped um, paper towel roll and toilet paper roll and I've got a cube shaped box um, so uh, those are perfect type of um, items for this uh, for beginning drawing students now um, how do you get started well the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to uh, remind yourself to hold your pencil in such a way that you can use the side of your pencil lead um, so not holding it the way where you write something using the point, but holding it in such a way um, where you can draw with the side of the pencil lead. Make sure that your pencil point is sharpened to a nice long point. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, make sure your pencils are sharpened before getting started. Um, stop in the middle of the drawing if you need to resharpen your pencil. Um, it's just gonna make the drawing easier if you have uh, your tools prepped. And I just have uh, my kneaded eraser here just in case. And uh, what I would suggest, of course, is uh, first doing um, uh, some thumbnail drawings. So as you uh, recall, um, thumbnail drawings are small little sketches to determine how things are going to sit in the frame. So you can do this on a separate piece of paper. Um, I'm just gonna do this here for the demo and then I'll erase it. Um, but uh, very lightly block in where things are going to sit in the composition so you can have a plan. It's just like if you are gonna take a trip somewhere and you need to kind of look up some directions on how to get there. Um, this can be very helpful, right? So I'm already getting an idea of how things are gonna sit. I've already drawn things um, too large to fit in the frame. So I would have to make things a little bit smaller in my frame. So I'm just gonna make my frame a little bit larger here see if things will fit better and I already like that much better so that gives me an idea of how things are going to sit in the frame of my paper here so I, I'm going to erase that because uh, I don't want it to be distracting however for you guys do your thumbnails on separate paper okay um, all right so for starting out, uh, we're gonna do just what we did in the thumbnail to start out, real basic shapes. But also one little tip that I find to be helpful is I like to give myself these um, like horizontal and vertical center lines on my page and that kind of helps me place things. And uh, as I'm looking at the items in real life, I can use my pencil as these horizontal and vertical um, lines, imaginary lines, so I can kind of figure out, okay, so where is where is the center of my composition going to be in this setup um, vertically and horizontally, so I can get an idea how big do these items need to be when I draw them. Um, and even though the items are three-dimensional, I'm going to start out with 2D shapes on the page 
just to kind of get things started. Okay, so I've kind of got an idea. So even though that waste paste paper um, basket uh, is a 3D cube kind of a shape. I'm only putting a square down first um, because I'm only worried about placement right now. Same thing with this little, um, uh, in real life it's a toilet paper roll, but in my drawing, just to start, I'm just placing a, a flat shape. Um, let's see, I gotta remind myself, where is the center? going to be okay yeah that makes sense it's near this little sphere here and then I've got the box here and the um, what's it called a uh, paper towel roll <laughs> why couldn't I think of that word uh, okay so um, now I've got a, a map or a plan uh, in basic shapes and that took me probably less than a minute to just place those things on there and that already gives me an idea of my composition. So this would be the stage in your drawing where you make a decision do you like the composition or not because if you don't let's say for example if I feel like there's too much negative space around here or maybe your maybe your um, items are too close to one side or you're getting a tangent of the edge of an item touching the edge of your page. Um, maybe things just aren't balanced. That would be the moment in your drawing at the very beginning at this stage is to decide, do I need to move things over or not? So the reason you do it now is because if you further develop any of these items, you're wasting time because they're gonna have to be moved later anyway and then you're gonna have to start over with them. So stop yourself every single time you do a drawing from observation at this beginning stage stop yourself and look at the composition before anything else if you like the composition then you can go uh, move forward to the next um, stage which would be starting to make these items a bit more three-dimensional and using the sighting technique um, so uh, the sighting technique, you can either use your pencil or a sighting stick. Um, I like to use barbecue skewers as sighting sticks sometimes, but I've got a pretty long pencil here, so I'm just going to use that. Now, uh, there's so much to look at. We've got five different objects here. Where do we start? Um, well, it's up to you, but I would start with large shapes first, comparing the different sizes, and uh, then you can move on to smaller things. So I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to compare something that might be a little bit similar in size. So um, in real life, I'm going to compare the uh, paper towel roll and the waste paper basket, keeping my arm nice and straight. I'm taking a measurement of the height of the paper towel roll, comparing it with the height of the waste paper basket. And I actually am realizing that they're the exact same height. Perfect. Now I go to my drawing and I check to see if that's true in my drawing. So the height of my paper towel roll in my drawing happens to be the um, length of my pencil, so that worked out nice. And the height of my waste paper basket looks to be about the same, so that's great. Uh, what about the height of the waste paper basket? Is that matching up in the right spot? If I kind of uh, use the top of the waste paper basket as an imaginary line that moves all the way towards the right and cuts through that uh, paper towel roll. Um, it's just a little bit above the center of that paper towel roll. Is that where I want it to be? I'm not sure. I'm going to check in real life using my pencil as a horizontal imaginary line. And now I am finding out that it might just be a little bit higher up on the paper towel roll. So I can either move the roll down a little bit or move the waste paper basket up a little bit. I think I'm gonna move this guy down just a little bit. So I'm making the correct lines first before I erase the old ones because the incorrect lines kind of serve as a marker um, so I make the separate, or I make the correct lines, then erase the ones I don't need, and 
and now I have my new little measurement for my paper towel roll here. Uh, so I'm going to continue in this fashion using the sighting technique for a while um, until I'm satisfied and then move on to the next step which is making things start to look a little more 3D. So I'm going to concentrate, <laughs> so I'm not going to talk, uh, and then once I'm ready to move on to the next step then I will talk some more. Okay, so I did some sighting technique. I'm uh, pretty happy at this point. I mean, I will go back throughout the drawing and make little adjustments, use the sighting technique again, make sure everything is correct as I do adjustments. But for now, uh, this is looking pretty good. So I'm uh, confident to kind of move on. Um, so uh, now I want to start to make things looking a little bit more 3D. So uh, what do I have here? I've uh, got a couple cube shapes. So uh, let's start there. Um, the largest one, um, I'm going to kind of use this uh, um, center line as kind of like the uh, corner um, of this waste paper basket. Uh, now, one thing to remember um, about uh, cubes is that um, every line or edge on a cube that is uh, parallel to another line has the same angle. So what I mean by that, um, let me kind of get this shaped here a little bit. Uh, oops, that might be a little bit too angled. Sorry, it's actually quite difficult to talk and draw at the same time. So let me just make my little adjustments here and then I'll and I'll talk some more. Okay. So that's that's good enough to uh, show you guys. Um, okay, so cube. Uh, like I said, every edge or line on a cube uh, that is parallel to another line or edge has the same angle. So for example, this edge or line has the same angle as this one and this one because they're all parallel to each other. Uh, now let's say I had an angle like this on the bottom. So if I use my pencil and line it up there and compared it to this one, you can see that the angle is much different. So that's not going to work. So that's how you can check on your cube to make sure things are looking good um, is just check the parallel ones, make sure they have the same angle. So these vertical ones will all be vertical. Um, actually, my waste paper basket in real life um, is not a perfect uh, cube. It actually the edges kind of angle out a little bit. So I will adjust that in a moment. But for now, let's just get it looking three dimensional, right? Um, if your if your shape is a perfect kind of a, a cube shape, then um, these lines. The ones that are all parallel, these vertical ones would all be vertical. And you can always kind of compare them with the side of your paper as well, because the side of your paper is always going to be vertical, right? So if you want to make sure that they're not angling, you can just kind of compare, make sure it looks uh, to be the same vertical um, edge as your paper. Uh, and then of course, so we did this one, we did these ones. And now we can do these ones as well. Does that have the same angle as this one and this one? Yes, it does. So we've got a good cube going on here. Let me clean up a little of these guidelines back here so we can see what we're doing. Uh, I'll come back to that one and adjust it to be that kind of shape that I see in real life. But uh, for now, uh, I want to move on to this one because this is also a cube. So I'm going to do the same kind of a thing. Um, Let's see here. So as you can see, I'm continuing to use the side of my pencil lead and drawing really light and uh, light. Okay. Now, with construction drawing, typically what we do is we draw as if the um, items are see-through and this is challenging but it is very important for learning how things are constructed 
And uh, if you follow the rules that I just mentioned for the cube, you will easily be able to figure out how the back and back corner looks because you are just copying the angles that you already see on the front of the cube to figure out the back. Um, for example, this angle of this line back here is the same as this angle in the front because they're parallel to each other, right? Okay, so same with this one here. This back corner, I can bring that vertical line down, match up the angles for these guys, and there we've got a kind of a rectangle cube. Okay, uh, okay, so um, again, I may have to do some proportion just adjustments later. Um, after I get everything really basic 3D mapped out, then I will go back and I'll do a little more siding just to make sure everything's still looking okay because I am making these little adjustments. Um, okay, paper towel roll is a cylinder shape. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, well, it's uh, rounded at each end and I'm looking at almost a profile view, but I can see a little bit of a, the top of the cylinder. Um, so, for example, I see this kind of a oval shape because I see the top of the paper towel roll. Uh, that particular oval shape, you are going to want to copy it at the bottom. What I see a lot of beginning drawing students make a mistake of uh, with these um, cylinder shapes is that they get one end nice and round, but then when they come to the bottom, they flatten it out. Um, that is not a, uh, that doesn't happen in real life because we're seeing things in perspective. And uh, if, if the bottom was flat, then the top would be two. And that, that would be like if we were looking at exactly a side view of this paper towel roll where, where we don't see any of like the top showing at all, um, that would be a perfect profile view. But since I'm looking a little bit down on this setup and I see a little bit of the top, that means I have to add that same shape at the bottom to get the roundness. Even if I wasn't drawing as if things were see-through, let me show you if I just erase the little bit back there. It still helps me get that rounded shape at the bottom by drawing all the way through uh, the shape. Um, so that's another reason why we do these construction drawings for practice so that you can you all can get practice with how to draw these shapes, right? And drawing all the way through a shape really helps. Um, another thing I want to talk about with these oval shapes is, as you can see, when I'm drawing the oval shape, I'm not resting my wrist down because it's really difficult to get a nice oval shape that way because I, I'm not having a very free fluid movement. So instead of doing that, I'm actually, uh, I have my arm in the air so it's not resting on the paper and I'm moving from my shoulder. So I'm getting a shoulder movement here. I'm not moving my wrist at all because my wrist can only do like a half moon shape. It can't do a full circle or an oval. So I have to move from my, um, from my shoulder. I almost said elbow. <laughs> from my shoulder to get these fluid um, either circles or ovals. And I usually go around a few times so that I have a better chance of getting some lines down that I want. I can always go back later and erase the ones I don't want and kind of clean it up so that I get the shape that I want, okay? So um, that is the trick for these kind of loose, light, fluid shapes there um, for ovals and circles, okay? Um, and again, as you're, as you're doing this, make sure you're continuing to use the side of your pencil lead and a very light touch. Use light pressure when you're drawing because potentially there could be things that you need to erase, things that you need to adjust, and you wanna be able to do that easily. Um, and you don't want your drawing to look forced or stiff or harsh, okay? We can always um, make lines look crisp later in the drawing, um, but for now, we're just still working out the problems. 
Uh, okay, so that um, method I just taught you of using a movement from your shoulder, I'm going to do that same thing over here with the tennis ball. Uh, that sphere shape is just going in as a circle. So there you are. And uh, I've got one more cylinder here, but this one's more tricky than this one because this one is on its side at an angle. So uh, I actually kind of started laying in the shape here, but uh, what I'm seeing here is this is the front of the toilet paper roll and uh, the angle let me just kind of check and see if that angle seems about right. It seems pretty close, so I will keep it as is. So see how the back, again, I'm drawing all the way through the form with the same uh, angle or the same type of oval that I used in the front so that I can get the um, correct roundness in the back. Um, another thing I often see is that the, the student, when they're drawing the back of the um, cylinder, is that they'll stop and then they'll make a sharp turn and then we get these weird little sharp corners like that. And it usually doesn't look like that in real life. Usually it's a little bit more of a softer transition, a little bit of roundness there. So um, keep that in mind when you're working on these cylinders to not get too harsh with those points. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm starting to get some good shapes here. Um, don't forget about negative space. For example, I have a little bit of space in between the toilet paper roll and the waste paper basket. So this is negative space in between. Uh, positive space is the items themselves. Negative space is everything around the items. So uh, for example, uh, you know, I'm noticing that that gap looks a little smaller in real life than it does in my drawing. So I may want to move this toilet paper roll over just a little bit to close up that gap. Um, so anyway, that's something to keep in mind. The negative space can be measured just as easily as the positive space. And, uh, and it's something that's easy to overlook when you're drawing and you're concentrating on the items that you're drawing. It can be easy to overlook the, the negative space, but it's just as important as the positive space. So don't forget to, um, to include that in your measurements when you're using the sighting technique. Okay, all right, so things are looking good. I'm gonna do a little bit more sighting technique and then we'll uh, move on to the next stage. Um, another thing while I'm thinking of it is um, it's all, always nice for these still life drawings to get a sense that they're sitting on something. And because we haven't gotten to this, uh, you know, uh, we haven't covered value yet, so we're not dealing with light and shadow yet. Um, what we can do is we can indicate um, where is the back of the table or surface that they're sitting on. For me, uh, the back seems to be somewhere right around somewhere right around here. So that will be a horizontal line. So you can kind of, um, you know, use your pencil as an imaginary guideline to figure out where things will continue over here. Um, or, you know, if you figure out, okay, it, it kind of lines up close to the corner of this toilet paper roll. Um, so that measurement there, bringing it over here to make sure that the make sure that the back of the table line is not angled, that it's actually straight and horizontal. Um, and I'm also noticing now uh, that the back of the table is actually um, helping me figure out that this box may have to be adjusted to be a little bit taller just because um, in real life, the cor uh, this corner is uh, taller than where the back of the table is. So um, so that is something to consider. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of adjustments and then I'll talk some more. So um, another little tip, uh, if you are drawing a toilet paper roll, for example, you need to find out the center 
of the front. Uh, as you can see here, um, I'm using some little vertical and horizontal guidelines to kind of determine where the center is so that I can make sure that I'm getting my oval that goes on the inside, the center of the toilet paper roll uh, in an accurate location. Okay. So I'm uh, just going back and forth between my pencil and eraser to put a bunch of lines down and then clean things up a little bit. Still using the side of my pencil lead. And don't forget we are drawing uh, as if the items are see-through. So um, just draw all the way through the, those shapes. So because I adjusted this to be a little bit wider, I had to adjust the oval for the end of the paper towel roll to be a bit wider so that they're matching so that I could get the correct roundness for the shape back there. So that's looking better. Another thing you could do is give yourself a center line like this. See if things are looking good. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I kind of uh, squint um, at what I'm drawing to kind of like blur my vision so that I can kind of look at the overall shape and not get distracted by all the faint little lines um, to kind of uh, check my work. And uh, if you need to rotate things around, kind of um, see what things would look if they were right side up, like this toilet paper roll that I'm struggling with a little bit because it is at an angle. I'm just moving my paper around so that I can kind of comfortably make some adjustments. And then I will put it back to right side up to check how it looks from my uh, setup um to double check my work uh, so this is a technique that i use often just to um, figure things out drawing is uh, all about problem solving so that's already looking better to me so now i need to move it back so that i can have a comfortable uh, angle to kind of adjust that little oval shape a little bit. It's definitely giving me some issues. If there's an area that's really giving you issues, uh, take a break from it. Move on to a different area and come back to it at a later time. Sometimes you just need fresh eyes, uh, getting a break from it and coming back to it and, uh, to, in order to see what's really going on. I think that's what I'm gonna do with that one. It's close, but there's just still something that's bothering me about it. Um, so let's see here. Now, uh, so as you can see, I adjusted the waste paper basket to be a little bit more angled because that's how it is in real life. It's tapered at the bottom, so it angles out like that. So that's looking nice. Uh, I think that I'm pretty much at the point where I can um, start cleaning up my lines and making them a bit more crisp. Uh, so, um, I would suggest though, when you feel you're at that stage, take one more sweep through using the siding technique for measuring to double check proportions and everything before you move to that last step. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start moving around my drawing and uh, cleaning some things up. And you're gonna see me rotating the paper a lot so that I can get at the right angle. For example, these vertical lines are a little bit awkward for control to draw a line this way. It's easier for me to kind of bring my elbow close and like move horizontally for straight lines. So um, you'll see me kind of doing things like that. So I'm gonna go back and forth between my pencil and my eraser uh, to clean up some lines. And by the way, I am still using my HB. If you started out with a 2B, I would move to an HB or a 2H at this stage uh, for cleaning up the lines because they are um, harder lead pencils, which will uh, give you more uh, crisp lines to work with. So even though I'm starting to use a little bit more of the point of the pencil lead, I'm still not using it like straight up and down like this. I think it's too easy to accidentally use too much pressure like that. So instead of holding it like this, now I'm holding it kind of like this. So it's still at an angle and I'm resting my hand on the paper. Um, it's just helping me get more control and I'm using short little uh, line strokes. So I'll show you here. So instead of trying to get this whole line, because it's kind of a long line, you can use little pencil strokes in a row to get your crisper line. And I am not using much pressure here. You don't need a lot of pressure to get a crisp line. Just the fact that I'm holding it differently and that I'm resting my hand down now, I'm using the shorter strokes, that's giving me the crisper line. Um, so, uh, so again, you don't need more pressure to get these crisper lines. So I'm just following the guidelines that I've already placed with my loose lines to create these crisper lines. And just cleaning up with the eraser, of course, when I need to. And as I go through this drawing, I'm still gonna keep the lines uh, moving all the way through the objects as if the objects were see-through. Once we uh, start doing drawings that are not construction drawings, you're still gonna use the technique of initially drawing through the objects, but later you clean up those lines that you don't need anymore. Um, but this is a really good practice for that. So you, um, you don't want to use too much pressure because you don't want your drawing to look really harsh and stiff, but also because you are probably still gonna be making adjustments and you are still gonna want the ability to erase um, if you use too much pressure, it's very difficult to erase completely. Um, so keep that in mind if you have a tendency to be heavy handed, to constantly remind yourself to use a light touch. So as you can see, I'm rotating my paper quite a bit through this process. So don't forget that that's an option for you. And then after I complete this object and do one or two other objects with the cleaned up lines, I will stop and double check my work, measure with the sighting technique again, make sure things are still looking good before I continue 
on. Now for spheres, when you're cleaning up, you are going to want to rotate your paper um, a lot. So as you could see, uh, I have, if I'm resting my wrist down, I have this kind of a movement. Uh, remember we talked about earlier, um, you know, when, when you have this half moon shape, you don't have a full circle movement, right? Because if I do this, I can't, I can't really do it on the paper without it looking like silly, right? And we want a nice, crisp, round, perfect circle. So you are going to have to rotate your paper. And I'll show you as I copy um, the lines that I already have here, I'm going to rotate the paper for the best angle for my wrist as I move all the way around the sphere or circle. Obviously a sphere is a three-dimensional circle but we are not adding um, value yet so we can't really see it as a sphere um, but I will show you one way that you can show that it's a sphere if you want. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let me clean up my uh, little excess lines here and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, that's good enough for now. So if you, if you wanted to make this look more like a sphere than a circle, even though you're only using line, you can do uh, an oval shape It moves from the edge to the edge. So it kind of looks like there's a rubber band wrapping around the sphere. So that makes it look a little more three-dimensional. It's a little bit hard to see because it kind of gets in the way of that uh, um, straight line of the bottom of the waste basket. But anyway, you get, you get the idea, right? It's a little, it's a, something that wraps around. I could do it this way too if I wanted. Look at that. That looks kind of cool. So now it looks like a see-through sphere with some rubber bands wrapping around it, right? Okay, um, another thing that you could do if you want is you could have the um, lines of the part of the shape that we like see in real life darker and then the lines behind the object can be lighter. Um, so I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, you don't have to do this, but I personally think that it looks nice. So I'm not darkening by adding any pressure. I'm just making these lines ever so slightly thicker. So this is called line quality variation. When you have uh, some lines that are thinner, some lines that are thicker. So maybe I keep these ones a little bit lighter and thinner because they're going to go behind these objects here. So maybe I keep those a little more delicate. And the background lines can be more delicate too. And then the ones in front, let me turn my paper again, can have that thickness. And this can kind of help you throughout your drawing, uh, doing things this way. Um, if you have areas um, where there's a lot of lines converging and if it's getting kind of confusing because you are drawing things as if they're see-through, um, this can kind of help clarify for you that information. So this line is in front because that's the front corner of the waste basket. And these top ones here we can see. So it's very um, 
it's very uh, subtle, but you can kind of see how um, some lines in front of the object are looking thicker and then the lines in the back are thinner. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm gonna continue working around here until things are uh, finished. So, um, and I'm just doing the, the same thing that I've been doing uh, here, is that I'm just uh, cleaning up the lines. Uh, you may have to stop occasionally to sharpen your pencils because this stage is definitely helpful to have your pencil nice and sharp. So it's starting to look uh, nice and it's starting to look more crisp, but I think what I'll do is before I move on any further is I will take one more uh, loop around with the siding technique. I'll double check all my proportions uh, and then I will continue to clean things up in the same way that I've just shown you. Uh, and then I'll show you uh, the finished product. All right. So um, that's it for a uh, construction drawing. Uh, to summarize, um, start out with large, flat, two-dimensional shapes. Uh, consider um, your composition and use the side of your pencil lead with a light touch. Then move on to the siding technique, measure for proportions, make sure compositionally things still look good after you measure your proportions. Once proportions are set, you start making things look more three-dimensional. Uh, once things look three-dimensional, uh, you check your proportions again, and then you uh, clean up your lines. Um, and then that's it. Just don't forget you are making um, uh, the items look as if they are see-through. Um, okay, so that's it for construction drawing.